everybody, Brian Hoagley here. Welcome back to Cecil Life. Uh, we are in the office today in Worcester, and we are joined by Delisha Hodu. She is at Sands and uh, doing some really, really interesting things. Wanted to have her on. Actually, it's uh, it's March now. We 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 timing wasn't perfect, but we uh, wanted to. Um, hit on a couple topics uh, around Black History Month. Uh, February's uh, wrapped up. And also just see what's going on with SANS, what's going on in, in your world. Uh, you know, we're constantly talking about the CISO life as far as what practitioners who are leading information security programs could and should be doing. Um, potentially we'll talk about, you know, staffing and resourcing and, and just, you know, working and building out those programs. What could possibly go into that? What, uh, what are you seeing that works and what doesn't? And just kind of have a conversation to just get to know you. So um, please introduce yourself to, uh, to all six people who subscribe to the channel. And uh, <laughs> how's it going? Hi, Brian. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, hello, everyone. I am Delisha Hodo, and I am extremely excited to be on CISO Life and to share all the great things that SANS HBCU is doing, um, as well as all the initiatives that SANS, in a larger sense, is doing to diversify the field of cybersecurity. So that's a that's a that's your your core focus, and and uh, at SANS is is leading this program. I also serve as a senior student advisor um, for our college, SANS Technology Institute. Uh, also known as SANS EDU. So that's primarily my my day job uh, for the most oh, nice. part. And then I also have dedicated a lot of time to helping build up our SANS HBCU team um, under the larger SANS umbrella and leading this initiative. Oh, great. So yeah, let's start at the top. Like what, um, well, like what got you into security? Like how did you, how did you uh, find yourself in this field? Everyone who, who seems to work in cyber has a, has an interesting origin story. Yes, I would like to say cybersecurity found me, honestly. I just kind of stumbled upon it. Uh, I'd always been the person in my family, the troubleshooter, always in the computers, the whole technology aspect, um, being the fixer of things. And I started from a nonprofit educational background, uh, serving students in college access. And I knew that I wanted to make a pivot. I was helping students get into college. And I said, you know what? I want to be on the other side of things and seeing people through college and how I can support them. Um, so when I made that pivot, I was looking for different jobs. And then I stumbled upon Sense Technology Institute. And I realized, wow, I had never heard of this company or college before, um, mm -hmm. but they're doing cybersecurity, which is a massive growing field. And I decided to apply. And I've been here for two years ever since and, and haven't looked back. And because of that experience, it, it allows me to marry the two passions that I have, which is just a natural love and curiosity for technology, mm -hmm. um, in addition to my love for supporting and advocating others through their dreams and what they want to do in life. Oh, that's great. Um, there's, there. I think there's an amazing correlation with between people who have stepped into kind of their passion, right, and and found their niche, and then as you realize that you're kind of living your dream, right, you you look back at others and you're like, you should do this too, or you should follow your dream, and then you you know there's not I don't think everybody, but it's great to hear that you know you 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 you're pulling people like into and and helping them you know, kind of get into the space. There's, there's a weird saying that I had, I had heard once, like, you know, when you, when you kind of enter, you know, the corporate world or, or working on things and you make it to the top floor, right. You know, you, you make it to whatever that, that level is, it's your job to send the elevator back down. The, what's the, this focus within SANS that is, um, is is driving this for you like how and, and enabling you to do this too what what is that like what's what's the program tell us more yes so sans hbcu was actually birthed um back in december of 2020 um from our initial diversity task force so of course back in june of 2020 uh, with all the different unrest and the unfortunate passing of george floyd ahmaud arbery brianna taylor and so many more sans was like you know what we really need to step up. There was an idea to create a diversity task force 
full of a great group of people. And I remember sitting on one of our meeting town halls and they talked about the diversity task force. I said, you know what, I want to be a part of that. So I, I asked, I said, hey, can I be a part of this? I noticed that you all are working on several initiatives. Have you mm. all thought about HBCUs? They said, no, we haven't. So they brought me on um, and I got to working, doing a lot of, a lot of grunt work, um, reaching out to HBCUs directly, trying to set up meetings to learn more about what they actually need and how yeah. we can support them. And I said, why not reach out to historical black colleges and universities? Because that's the best way if we want to diversify the field of cybersecurity and get more opportunity for those right. who aren't necessarily thought of or wouldn't necessarily consider cybersecurity as even a career field in the first place. Let's start at historically black college and university and get them involved in some type of way. Um, so from there, we actually created a full team out of this because all the work that we were doing mm -hmm. and just from the interest that was garnering from it, formed this team back in December of eight individuals, seven women and a strong man, <laughs> Dennis Gendret, um, who was leading at the time. And we, we got to work honestly. And from that day forward, and since then, we have created cyber ranges uh, for HBCU students and alumni that have been successful. Our most successful one was our Black History Month one, where we had over 450 uh, participants, and we were yeah. able to award six HBCU students or alumni prizes. And then that also spun off and created an opportunity to launch two pilot academies one with Norfolk State University and one with the University of Virgin Islands, which has been super successful to the point where we already have students in our Norfolk State Academy who've earned job offers and will be graduating with a job in cybersecurity. That's awesome. That's amazing. So you, so, so SANS is, is putting resources and then you and your team are kind of making the connections with colleges like this. Um, and you're you're so you're setting up programs you're kind of giving them resources and then basically just kind of bringing awareness to students at those colleges that hey cyber is a field and here's here's kind of what it is because there's just sometimes there's kind of a broad term when people are like oh you're in cyber security and it could be i would say it's just the way that we're saying hey you belong in this field and you don't have to fit a certain stereotype like there's okay. no prototype for what it is to be in cybersecurity and also try to break down those walls of what even is cybersecurity you know like right. you said it's very broad there's so many avenues you can go down to cybersecurity that i don't think a lot of people realize they just hear the word cybersecurity and they think of a hacker or whatever right. movie they saw um where it was a hacker and computers and stuff uh, but also letting them know that hey not only will you have support of your HBCU, but you'll also have the support of our team mentorship that we're going to be with you every step of the way. And students have been able to witness that already. And uh, ironically enough, I had a student from Norfolk State and he was just like, you know, you all provided me with so much uh, support that I couldn't even imagine. And I'm super thankful to you all and thanks for even giving me this opportunity because I never would have had it. And that's what we do this for. That's why I do this work on top of my day job because I feel like it's really important for individuals to have the opportunity to learn something that they never thought that they would be able to learn and to be able to take that knowledge from what they learn from us and just mm -hmm. from cybersecurity in general and take it back to their community and educate those younger than them and say, hey, another path to success to build generational wealth and to be successful that doesn't fit into what you've seen over and over again um whether it's in school on tv um or just around in your community where people only know what they know and you're kind of exposing them to something different right oh that's that's awesome um and there there definitely is a community within cyber like it's and within it um are you exposing kind of these students, you know, they're net new to the idea of even working in this field? Are, are you kind of saying, hey, you know, now that you're going to, once you get into the workforce, like this is the community you're going to be part of, these are the resources you should be using, because it's one thing to just get in, but now you're thinking about, right. all right, what's my career path? Like, what, is, what does that look like? What is, you know, what are you maybe specifically doing? Or what is SANS trying to do kind of as, as an overarching, um, you know, resource for, for folks now that they've entered the field? 
I would start with our free summits. Um, so as we know, because of the pandemic, everything went virtual. Yeah. Um, so SANS was like, hey, we're going to do virtual events and they're going to be free. We're not going to charge because um, nice. we want as many people in the community to get access as possible. And one of those ways that we kickstarted it to give an overarching theme and to say, hey, for those new to cyber, you know, those who are looking or exploring the possibility of entering cyber and even those who've been in cyber for a while, if you want to contribute or just offer your knowledge, at the new to cyber summit which okay. is really popular last year and it's back again this year actually this month the 23rd and the 24th um so that was one of the easiest ways is being strategic and using that low-hanging fruit like hey what do we do really well summits how can we expand our access let's create a new cyber summit that is focused around getting more people into this field exposing them to other individuals like you brian who've been CISOs and saying hey this is the pathway to success. This is what we've mm -hmm. done. And this is how you can be successful. And then also outside of those summits, giving them access to our Capture the Flag events for free. So just like our Black History Month Cyber Range, just like our new HBCU team Cyber Wars competition, where we mm -hmm. allow students to form teams and represent their HBCU and compete together. Um, we had that back in October and that was super successful. And then the other ways that we do it within our academies is every week we have a meeting with the students in our cohorts. Mm, okay. So every week they expect, you know, to be around us. We're going through what they learned in that topic that day for a particular science course, any questions that they have, anything that they're struggling with. Mm -hmm. And then we're also bringing in other people who want to give back to the community and come speak with them and say, hey, this is what I do on a day to day basis. This is what my position in the cybersecurity field looks like. And this right. is how you can get there, too, if you're interested, whether this pen testing or cyber law. Who knew that cyber law? Yeah. Was even a thing? So yeah. different things like that that we would not necessarily think about and just trying to use all of our resources and all of our connections to bring it back full circle and to say, hey, we're going to dip into all of our resources as much as possible to give you everything that you need and all the tools that you need mm. to be successful and to do the same thing and reach back out and give back to others. We will link everything uh, that you have talked about, all of that down below. Um, that's going to be, that's going to be great. And I can't wait to see kind of like, what's the next iteration? Like what's the, is there another evolution and kind of next plans that you have on the horizon for for these programs? What what does kind of 2022, 2023 look like? Yes, we're definitely looking to continue to improve and grow um, our program, our HBCU Cyber Academy, the nationwide academy applications closed yesterday. However, oh. we're already looking ahead and we will have another cohort um, coming soon. For those who are unaware, SANS has other academies. We have Women's Academy, Vet Success, and another Diversity Academy as well. And those applications are actually opening up in the next two months. So look out for those as well. Um, and in addition to that, I just want to say thank you so much, Brian, for having me. And the only last thing that I want people to look out for as well, as we continue to grow our capture the flag events and cyber ranges is this fall we will bring back our second annual hbcu team cyber wars competition so if there are any hbcu alumni or college students out there who see this please go ahead and, and let your leadership know that we are bringing that back and we want to see more hbcus compete and be crowned champion this year's champion was norfolk state university we want to see if norfolk state is going to reclaim that title again or if we're going to get a new hbcu champion Nice. Delicia, that's awesome. Is there is there anything that people can do to reach out and provide their own support to the program that you're doing? Is there someone, a way for them to contact, um, outreach, donate? Is there is there anything that you can ask of the community to help keep moving the initiatives that you have along? Yes, one of the easiest ways that you can support us is whenever you see us post anything, please spread the word direct everyone to science.org slash hbcu um, and get on our connection list 
That way you're going to hear it first whenever we launch the next academy, the next cyber range, or any other initiative that we have going on geared towards the community. We definitely want you to check us out on sense.org slash HBCU. Um, if you are a company out there, we would love to have co-sponsors for our academies um, and individuals who are interested in providing our HBCU academy students with access to jobs or internships. So we're definitely open um, in any which way that people are willing to support the initiatives that we have going on and ultimately help us change the lives of those that we want to impact. No, it's phenomenal. So sans.org slash HBCU, that is the outreach. We'll link that down below. Alicia, again, thank you so much for taking the time uh, today as we just leave Black History Month. So you said for the next two months, that's March and April, those new applications will be starting up. And then in Q3, Q4 of 2022, you've got the next um, event going on where hopefully or not, Norfolk gets unseated um, or retains their uh, retains their crown. So thanks again so much for, for uh, being on with CISO Life. And yeah, you have a great day. Everybody out there, um, thanks for watching, be safe. Stay good, keep your head up, uh, follow us around on hashtag CISO life and anything obviously that SANS has out there. Again, that's sans.org slash HBCU. And we will catch you next time. Thanks. Thank you.